chemistry in the greenhouse. Here are four food colours obtained from a popular supermarket in the UK. We've got yellow, blue, green and red. On the labels, the substances responsible for those colours are listed as follows. Curcumin for the yellow, spirulina for the blue, green is listed as having spirulina and curcumin, whilst the red contains anthocyanins and a paprika extract. You might like to research into those substances. Three of the food colours, blue, green and red, all have citric acid listed as a preservative, so we might suspect that these colours are acidic. Curcumin in the yellow does not dissolve very well in water, it does dissolve in alcohol, and the carrier, according to the label on the back, the solvent then, is propylene glycol. Let's have a look at the pH of the four food colours in their containers. We'll be using the pH paper that we've got here and the indicator chart to write down the pH number. First, yellow. And that comes out as yellow. It's around pH 6, possibly 7. Next, the blue. This contains the spirulina. Well, if we ignore the blue being produced by the colour itself, we can see that that is pH 7 or 8 on the paper there, which is somewhat of a surprise. But there we have. Next to the green. Green's very viscous, very thick solution. Uh, again, if we ignore the green colour at the bottom, we've got perhaps pH 7 on the paper there. Finally, the red food colour. And again, difficult to see the colour in the bottle because the paper is showing red. But that is in citric acid, or does contain citric acid as a preservative. Right, let's introduce drops of the colours into what we've got here is deionised water. So let's see what colours are produced in the water. There's the yellow. Producing a nice yellow solution. Next, the blue. A nice blue colour. Green. This one's quite viscous. Green colour there. And finally, red. with a pleasing red colour. Well, those are now all in deionised water. We might like to check the pH of the water that we put the colours into. So let's do that. Introduce a little water into the tube here. And test the pH of the water. And that's showing up, as we suspect, around pH 6 to 7 there on the pH paper. That's the deionised water. Let's leave that at the back as a reference. Right, now for the solutions. Let's have a look at the pH of these solutions that we've got here. So the yellow, again, around pH 6, according to the paper there. Next to blue. Solution. Well, if anything, again, very quickly, that's pH 6 to 7. Next to green, pH 6. And 
I'll get the paper out there, the red. Still showing an acidic pH around four or five possibly there. So what happens to the colours of these four food colours if we now make the solution alkaline? What we've got here is some sodium hydroxide solution. We can show that as being very dark purple. So pH there, 13, 14 for alkaline. What happens if we introduce alkali solution into the four food colours? So let's add some. Here's the yellow on addition of alkali and it turns orangey red. The blue turns very pale green. The green changes to orange and the red turns very dark. That colour, which we might see, is in fact a dark green, which is interesting. Let's just check the pH again of those. So this was the yellow one. That's alkaline, of course, now. Just checking they're all alkaline. The blue, yes. Purple, dark blue, purple colour, alkaline. The green, now alkaline. And finally, the red, alkaline. So an alkaline solution, the yellow has turned orange, the blue very pale green, the green is that orangey red colour there, and the red has turned green, dark green. Some interesting results there for our four food colours and changing the pH. What can we find out about what's happened to the structures of the chemicals there under the differing conditions.